In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear ones, teachers and students, as we are continuing our beautiful Lenten journey, <clears throat> the Holy Fathers are bringing to us, to our attention, this reading from the Old Testament. So we heard from the Genesis this parcel of the, the reading about Noah. I'm pretty sure the majority of us know the story of this wonderful man, a man of love and faith. So, and what the, the writer is mentioning to us, that when he got into the boat, he was 600 years old. At first, we'd say, okay, so they lived long, so it's, he was old enough to get in the boat, right? But if we go one step back behind, we will see that when God told him to start building the ship, he was 500 years old. So imagine, you would say, okay, so to build that boat, it will take a couple of years, 10, 10 years, not more than that. But it took him 100 years. So imagine all this period of time he was living among his kinsmen. But instead of helping them, they were making fun of them, of him. So you see how patient is God with his people. He gave them the opportunity to see him and to help him and through his patience and love to repent and that way they will turn back to God and the flood will never happen. But instead of repenting and helping him, they were making fun of him. Oh, he's crazy, he's cuckoo. He doesn't know what he's doing. Instead of living and having fun, he, he is building this thing that have no idea what, what he is doing here, right? <clears throat> but you see, God granted them another hundred years, a huge period of time. If you think, 100 years, it's a lot, right? To build a ship. But this, God gave it to those around him to see what he is doing and to come back to their senses, to repent, to stop sinning. Because the humanity at that point had trespassed all the boundaries. So many of our fellow men today, they're asking, why did, if he is loved, why did he allow, or why did he punish them to happen? Well, you, as you see, he gave them the opportunity to repent. But, you know, we, we can compare this situation with the situation of the New Testament when the Son of God was incarnated. And he came teaching, preaching, performing of all these miracles and showing love towards men. And what he got in, in return? Hatred and ultimately crucifixion. But remember when he was saying, all oh, Jerusalem, almost crying, and saying, prophesizing that it's enough. You who, ha who hated and killed, stoned the prophets of God, 
Now you're going to be destroyed. And your people is going to be scattered. So you see, after multiple times of sending the prophets to open their spiritual eyes, to return them to God, and them denying the prophets, not only denying them, but killing them, literally. He said, enough is enough, right? When he sees that there is no return, then he allows this punishment to occur, to take place. <coughs> he is giving us so many chances, so many awakening calls to wake up from our liturgic sleep, to wake up, to see the, the light and to follow the light. But as you see those of the Old Testament, they did not care. The only thing they cared, having fun, eating and drinking, having good time. And Jesus' contemporary, the Pharisees, what they were doing? They were seeking to find something wrong in Jesus and to put him to death that they they can do whatever they wanted because they were ruling the people of Israel. So everything was in their hands. You see, ultimately, we are getting to the point to realize that we as humans, we are so rebellious and we do not want God in our life. We do not want him to tell us what to do. We do not want to obey to his commandments. And definitely we do not want to follow him. Why? If I can eat and drink and go wherever I want to, do whatever I want in the way I want it, right? But you see that God is patient, but everything has limits. It goes once, twice, three times, ten times, a hundred times. As it was with the the people of the Old Testament before the flood, right? He gave them a hundred years. A hundred chances, right? Or maybe more. Because in one year, 350 something days, so they had a lot of chances. But no one, you see, except Noah, he was the only righteous one. Except him and his family, no one make it, made, made it to the boat. So, which means that it, if he was so strict back then, what makes us think that he's not going to act the same way with us, our generation, that we know that Revelation is it, it's at hand. That the second com, com, coming is at hand. It's going to happen soon. We are seeing the signs that he prophesied is happening. Literally. We are seeing those signs every day. And yet we are remaining in blindness, in darkness, and leaving our way or just following the flock. Right? We do not want to change. Oh, everybody is doing that, so why am I different? Well, but everybody is going to answer for them, for themselves, and each one of us is going to answer in front of God for himself. What we do, and how do we do it? Right? How do we accept God? How do we accept his word, his teaching? And, he, and how do we accept the Holy Spirit in our lives? This is what actually matters. And a, a true man of love, obedience, and piety shines like the candle. As we can see now the candles, you can see them, right? Even though 
it's darkness, but the candle, if it's on top, it's it lights, it's lightning, right? So the sa the same thing, my dear ones, with those that accepted Christ. Like it, uh, this uh, hermit, which was working hard for his living. So he was li living in the desert, praying day and night, but also he was making things with his hands, various things, and once in a while he will, will go down to the city and sell what he was making so that he could buy some stuff that he needed or just for charity. And one of these days, as he was going down to the city, he sees on the road a leper. So the, the man is, uh, is asking him, Father, where are you going? He said, to the city, to the market. Oh, take me with you. But that guy could not walk. So he has his load already, and he's taking on his back the leprous guy, which could not walk. And he said, take me with you. So he took him. He said, no, put me wherever you're going to sit to sell your stuff. Put me right, right, right there. So now he's selling the first piece of what he, he, he made there and the guy is asking him father how much did you make uh, out of that so and so buy me a, a loaf of bread okay so the priest went and bought a loaf of bread now he's say, selling another thing how, how much did you get for that so and so give me more bread so he went and bought more bread so at the end of the day, he spent all his money with that guy. So now he finished and he start, started back, but the, the guy said, hey, where, where are you going? Take me back from the place you, uh, you, you found. He said, okay. He took him and he put him back exactly where he found him. And uh, he blessed him and started his, took his way back to the monastery. And he heard this voice, blessed are you Father Agathonicus, before God on earth. And he turned back and there was no one. So it was the angel of God to try him, to try his heart. And you see, he did not keep anything for himself. This is the true, genuine faith and trust in God. When we put those in suffering before us, we're, we're not looking at our needs, but we're not looking at the needs of others. And this is a great example. And so was Noah. He wanted everyone, he was preaching, he was telling them, but no one paid attention to what he was saying. They were making fun of him because they were not interested in, in what he was doing. They were not interested in God. And that's why the flood occurred, took place. Because even though they had the chance, they didn't took that chance. Right? So imagine now each, each one of us, we are going to the supermarket and you see a LM guy that says, hey, take me on your back and take me there. Are you going to do that? So it's questionable, right? So you see how far are we from loving our neighbor? We have a lot of work. We have a lot of work to work with ourselves, to improve ourselves, to improve our, our life, to imitate God. So may God enlighten us and lead us to life eternal. Amen. God bless you all.